Hey besties, welcome to my channel if you are new here, welcome back if you are returning, it's so good to have you. If you are new, my name is Charlotte and from the title of today's video you will know that today we are doing a beginner's guide to fantasy from a beginner. I am very much a fantasy beginner, I have not read huge huge amounts of fantasy but it's a genre that I am really really enjoying, especially at the moment. And this is a video that has been requested, so I thought we'd give it a go. We'd see how we get on, because I did one of these on TikTok last year when I first got into fantasy. And I definitely feel like there's, I've read quite a lot of fantasy in the last couple of months. I've read more fantasy since that video was filmed. So we're going to give it a go. And of course, as I kind of said, I am a beginner. This is a disclaimer that I am not an expert of fantasy. Most of these recommendations are going to be basic because I've kind of only really gone into fantasies that have been like really really popular like I'm not gonna lie that is what I do with pretty much all of my reading I like reading books that other people are talking about because one of my favorite parts of reading and one of my favorite parts of book talk booktube is the community aspect so I do pretty much read the books that every other bitch is reading disclaimer done let's jump straight into things. So if you are wanting to get into fantasy and you have never read any fantasy before something that I would recommend is thinking about like what your favourite genre currently is and almost picking your fantasy based off of that so it's something that you're still familiar with but you can kind of get to grips with the idea of like those fantasy elements. So for example I think if you normally like thrillers and cosy mysteries you would really like Belladonna by Adeline Grace. So this is a gothic fantasy. It is about a character called Signa, who is basically orphaned as a child and then she keeps getting like passed around pillar to post, all of these different relatives. They're all kind of like, by, by this point, you know, she's going around the place. But everyone that becomes like a guardian of hers ends up passing away which is obviously very very sad so she kind of has a death following her she then ends up with her last remaining relatives at thorn grove however when she is there a spirit kind of pops up <laughs> and claims that she is poisoned so then signa basically sets about solving the case of that mystery and how that has happened so obviously in this we fo we focus a lot on kind of solving the murder solving the mystery but we also have these kind of elements of death who is a physical character in this series and the fantasy element of that rather than kind of like anything too too crazy so i think if you are like used to reading a lot of kind of mysteries this would probably be a really good book to start with because i don't think it would put you like too outside of your comfort zone or be too different to the kind of genres that you typically read if that makes sense like i think you could have a lot of fun with this it's a really really good read it's quite quick and the whole series is just quite fun and definitely like a good way of dipping your toes in to magic and fantasy and the supernatural without like going as all in as something like akata if you don't know if it's going to be a genre that you would enjoy okay so then for my romance girlies obviously we know romanticity is a really big genre and i would definitely say there are some books that are like in that genre that are more romance heavy and some books that are more fantasy heavy and this is a big spectrum there's so many books that could fall into this but one book that i think is a really good fantasy for romance readers in particular is powerless by lauren roberts i'm sure so many people have heard of this book it is quite literally everywhere but if you do not know if your algorithm is so far away from fantasy let me tell you so this is about Payden who is an ordinary in a world where like you're basically not allowed to be ordinary is like illegal because everyone here has powers so in this we see Payden basically end up meeting Kai who is one of the princes and actually in charge of banishing ordinaries however he doesn't know that Miss Payden is ordinary when they meet. So their interaction, because she ends up saving Kai, basically it may ends up getting Payden involved in the purging trials, which is giving Hunger Games 100%. If you read Hunger Games when you were a kid, you would also really enjoy this book, I think. Maybe you started read, like you read a lot as a teen, didn't read for a long time, I think this is also a good book to get into. But anyway, this I think is a really good one for romance lovers because the banter that takes place in this is 
in my opinion a lot more like a romance book than most other fantasies like just the conversations it is very very dialogue heavy which i think makes transitioning from romances into fantasy a lot easier because it's almost written in like a romance adjacent way as opposed to written in a fantasy way where we have these like very long heavy descriptions and things like that so i think this would be quite like an easy book as a romance reader to give a go to get into the world of fantasy and then lastly we have two books for academia and dark academia girlies we have Babel by rf kwang as you can see this book is so heavily tabbed i really do quite love it but I think this is a really good kind of like dip your toe in to fantasy book and that is kind of how I describe it to people because of the way the magic system works in this. So this is a book, I'm just going to read the blurb because the blurb doesn't really tell you what it's about and I think maybe that's for the best. Oxford 1836, the city of dreaming spires. It is the centre of all knowledge and progress in the progress, <laughs> progress <laughs> in the world. And at its heart is Babel, Oxford University's prestigious Royal Institute of Translation, the towel from which all power of the empire flows. Orphaned in Cantoon and brought to England by a mysterious guardian, Robin Swift thought Babel a paradise until it became a prison. But can a student stand against an empire? So in this, the magic of silver is kind of like an extended metaphor for empire. So I think like, if you are new to fantasy and new to like magic systems but you're very familiar with this kind of writing and this kind of story of like historical fiction academia i think you'd really enjoy it because it's not like you don't have like a goblin or a fairy like popping itself up like it's very almost realistic i guess you could say so it's not kind of too crazy so i think that would be a really good one if you do like academia along with that we also have the atlas six so this series is i love it so much it is about six magicians who have basically like entered into the alexandrian society but there's only five places and throughout the series we kind of follow them on their journeys throughout and we have some really cool magic but some of it is also like really physics-y and science-y and some of their powers are more like magic-y <laughs> whereas some of them like they they are called physicists so it is really really interesting i love these books olivia blake's writing is absolutely stunning so i think if you like beautiful writing you like this whole kind of like dark academia vibe i think you would really really enjoy these books especially if you are a little bit worried about kind of similar with Babel if you are worried about having like mythical creatures appearing like obviously we have magicians in this but it's a lot more like realistic -y feeling I guess than something like Akatar or Fourth Wing where you've literally got like fairies and dragons. So I think another really good place to start with fantasy is going into YA. It's a little bit kind of like easier to get your head around there's sometimes less going on the books are typically a little bit shorter so it's just like a nicer introduction i think sometimes um two of my personal favorite ya fantasies so we have once upon a broken heart by stephanie garber this series is everything this was like the second fantasy that i ever read and honestly i love it, it holds such a special place in my heart this is about Evangeline Fox who has always believed in happily ever after until she learns the love of her life is about to marry someone else and all of her dreams are shattered. She's desperate to stop the wedding and to heal her wounded heart so Evangeline strikes a deal with the charismatic but wicked Prince of Hearts. In exchange for his help she he basically asked for three kisses and they can be given at like a time or place of his choosing but then evangeline basically she learns tales out of time bargaining with an immortal is not the best thing to do it's very dangerous and there's always a twist in it and that is all kind of what happens like in the first like 30 pages or something and then we go on through that and the stories become amazing the world in this is like mm, i think about the world in this all the time if i could go in into any fantasy world it would be the magnificent north like i'm just absolutely obsessed with it it sounds inc like oh i love this world so much i love all of these characters they absolutely live rent free in my mind it makes me so sad because like this magnolia parks and powerless like 
I read them all in like such quick succession and they are still books that I think about all of the time and like obsess over and it just makes me so sad that like I don't know if I'll have it again do you know what I mean like oh I miss it I miss like I miss having books that I just connected to like that do you know what I mean I feel like it happens so rarely but yeah I would really recommend this series if, like if you don't like YA maybe not however however for my YA doubters I will say I find reading YA fantasy very very different to reading YA in other genres so I do not read any YA romance the only YA that I read is like YA like mysteries like thrillers and YA like fantasy anything any other genres like I definitely feel too old for them but there's something about like a lot of YA fantasies I just I really like I feel like a lot of them have good stories still I also find that like with YA like as the series progresses a lot of them end up feeling like less and less YA so that's also something to be a little bit aware of as well but it doesn't happen in every series but it does sometimes happen for example like the Red Queen series I found that it happened the Belladonna series it definitely happens in as well so just something to be cautious of but our next book is I've only read the first book in this series so I'm not recommending the full series just yet because I don't know what it'll be like but if you have started to dip your toe into fantasy and know that you like games and trials maybe you read powerless or you've read the hunger games before light lark oh this is so so good this was a five star read for me i think most of these have been five stars so that's why they are in this the recommendations but this is absolutely incredible so every 100 years the island of light lark appears again and it's only like it only appears for 100 games and it's so it can 100 games 100 days so it can host a deadly game and basically the rulers of the six realms go there to break their curses and then from breaking their curses they would then win an unparalleled power the curses in this are like absolutely insane it's like it's so cruel it's so evil and there was so many twists and turns in this like it was I was so shocked when certain things happened like my jaw was literally on the floor like I was gobsmacked it was insane but yeah really gripping I love the characters in this I love the romances in this just the way everything was done was like absolutely perfection and I think like if you like a bit of mystery I think you'd really like this and if you like problem solving in books so I I'm a plot girly I, when I'm reading fantasy like I am reading for a plot I'm not reading fantasy for the vibe I'm reading romance and fiction for the vibe I'm coming to fantasy typically seeking plot seeking action seeking things happening and let me tell you did she provide that for me loved her okay last but not least we have some of my adult fantasies so the first one it is basic and I actually did not enjoy this series that much but I think it's a really good series to read to get you to like learn about all things fantasy as like there's a lot of things in this series that kind of like ex like goes into all series like into a lot of fantasy things if that makes sense um I don't really know I, I have explained that so poorly so poorly but alas we have Akatar, so as I said there's so much of this that kind of is I don't know I think this is a good way basically of teaching you the fantasy basics we have war we have romance we have bad characters we have like redemption arcs of characters we have these twi like twists and turns like I think the series sums up this is probably a hot take the series I think sums up the genre quite well and that you also learn a lot of um like you learn about things like wards and like magic-y things that personally I hadn't come across until reading fantasy so I do think this is kind of like a essential reading when you are early on in your fantasy journey I think if you are picking up quite a lot of fantasy books especially adult fantasy maybe you don't need to read this but I also so much of the book spaces is about these books sometimes it's just nice to read them so you know what's going on i know these are incredibly popular in general and especially at the moment everyone does seem to be reading these but i would say there is a reason they're a good time they're definitely worth a go especially as a lot of places you can get the whole series like five pound each book now so it's kind of like you know pretty affordable it's a it's an okay time it's something 
considering I didn't enjoy them that much, like I don't think I gave any of them like a five star or anything, I do consider rereading this series very often. But I, I don't know why, but I like sometimes I'm like maybe my thoughts will change. And because of that alone, I think it is probably worth giving these a go which is why it's in this video another one that i think you learn a lot about kind of fantasy basics from especially with creatures like dragons is fourth wing i often find myself craving a book like fourth wing this is about violet soren gale who has basically like trained her whole life to be a scribe and then she ends up becoming a rider so it's like a college where they you could be like a rider where you ride dragons a scribe like infantry or like just like army I think something like that I'm not too sure I can't remember it's been a while but yeah so we basically follow Violet's journey to becoming a writer and it's a good time it's a really good time there's so many twists and turns so much happens between this book and the second book like I kind of get what's happened in both jumbled which is why I'm not speaking too much on like the plot but yeah it is absolutely crazy and definitely like again same as Akatar like you learn a lot about like warts and runes and things like that that then come up a lot in other fantasies and I think like especially with fourth wing I think where the author this was her first fantasy and she'd wrote very months before everything is explained quite well there was, there's been other books where things have come up before and like before I read these two where I had to google like what is a ward or like what does this mean whereas in this like I, I found those things to be like really thoroughly explained so I think is it the best book in the world no is it a really fun time yes does it actually I think teach quite a lot about like basic fantasy yes does that make it a good place to start yes especially again if you are coming from romance I think this is a really really good one especially as it does kind of follow those typical like romance arcs and then we have a little bit of a different one so we have Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies so this is very much like a book where you're reading it for the vibe it's giving cozy but it's not like there's not too too much plot but I think it's just a nice time so it's about Emily Wilde who basically goes on an expedition to write the world's first encyclopedia of fairy lore and she ends up going into this like town and she is like uncovering a lot of the fairy secrets and we basically follow her journey this is written as a diary so we're just reading her diary we're seeing what she gets up to towards the end it does go more plot and book two is definitely more plot but yeah it's very cozy vibes and one of the reasons i think this is quite good like i don't think this is should be your first fantasy but early on in your fantasy journey i think it's good as a way of learning about different kinds of fate and fairy because a lot of books which is something i didn't realize when i got into fantasy i i thought people were like making up new things <laughs> which maybe is silly maybe other people think the same but yeah I definitely thought that people were making up their own things a lot of fantasy books rely on like the same like kinds of fae and fairy or the same kinds like of different dragons and wyvern wyvern I don't know how you say it but I think books like this I think can become really helpful for like learning that about that stuff I, I would see this basically as wider reading it's fun it's cozy it's a good time it's not like super plot heavy i think maybe if you're an academia girly because these are seen as like light academia then these might be a fun place to start but yeah it's a little bit different to the others i would say and then lastly we have one of my favorite series we have one dark window by rachel gillig so this is a gothic fantasy and these are super super atmospheric quite different to belladonna and even though like they are both gothic fantasies so this is quite a heavy magic system so i wouldn't recommend going into this as your first fantasies i think it could be a little bit confusing i would read some of the others especially some with magic systems and give that then kind of go into something like this but in this series we follow elspeth who basically has a nightmare in her head so she is like another voice in her head basically and she has this as part of this illness that gives you magic 
which is forbidden. It's very complex magic system, but the romance in especially book two is absolutely incredible. And I would say book two is like a, a really good for me example of everything I, like I want a fantasy to do. We have like battle, we have going on like an expedition, we have like there's so many elements that to me are hitting like classic fantasy things that I want to see that I love seeing in a fantasy. So yeah, I think this is a really good series and a fun place to start. Quite a complex magic system. I have spoken about this in a few other videos, so if you are intrigued, I did read this in my 24 hour reading vlog. So I would definitely recommend giving that a watch if you want to know my wider thoughts, just because it is a little bit confusing and I don't want to make this video really long because I can already see I've been talking for like over half an hour, so. <laughs> but that is my all of my fantasy recommendations. So yeah, these are the books that I would say if you're wanting to get into the genre from a beginner, beginner recommendations as a beginner, I would give these a go because I think you would probably be in fairly safe hands with giving the genre a go with these books. But that is everything from me. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, please give this video a thumbs up. If you're a more seasoned fantasy reader, please give me some recommendations. Or if there's any books that you think I'd like in general, give me recommendations because I'm kind of over the books that are on my TBR at the moment. So I want to buy more books. So please, <laughs> horrific reasoning, but yeah, give me recs. And yeah, like this video, subscribe if you have not. I'd love to see you like have you around but yeah that is everything from me have a great day and I'll see you hopefully in the next one bye